Hi everybody, Charles here. Welcome to Backroads Living. In today's video, we're going to be discussing health care and medical supplies for the prepper again. Since this new mandate came out by the president, we're now in a situation that we're beginning to see some of the uh, effects of the mandate. We talked about this a week or so ago when this first took place, that there will be consequences that would follow this mandate, and we're beginning to see them. Uh, we have seen states begin to sue the president and this administration, but the backside of this that a lot of people aren't seeing is the fact of how this is affecting hospitals and their staff. So we've already heard of one hospital in New York City that had shut down their uh, maternity ward because their staff had just walked off and quit the people that worked in a maternity ward so they're going to have to wait now and uh, try to find people who have been verified to work that um, maternity ward for them. So let's look at this article here today and uh, it says uh, Texas hospital faces closure over COVID-19 vaccine mandates. CEO. Now, this is an article uh, from the Epic Times, and I'm just reading the article. I'm not stating opinions in this. This is just a news article I'm reading. It says the chief, chief executive of a hospital in Texas warned that his facility faces closure after President Joe Biden's announcement last week that most health care workers get this right here. I'm sure you can read that. If the mandate goes through, Brownville Regional Medical Center CEO Jerry Jasper said that 20% of my probably 20 to 25% staff will have to go away if that's the case, reported KCBD. Losing those workers, he said, would likely cause his hospital to shut down. Now, we're not talking about a wing of the hospital or a ward in the hospital. We're talking about the entire hospital shutting down. And losing, now he said losing Medicare and Medicaid money isn't an option here. The White House stipulates that health care workers who work at hospitals and facilities that receive either Medicaid or Medicare funds will have to get inoculated. Okay, so this fellow that runs the hospital, he said when we lose our nurses, we won't be able to keep the hospital open, and we can't stop uh, receiving Medicaid and Medicare because if we do that, we won't be able to make enough money to keep the hospital open either. So either way, it's a lose-lose situation. And what he said here is it's huge in our rural community as all the other rural communities. We all have high poverty levels and stuff like that. So a lot of Medicaid usage in our communities and stuff like that. So we can't get rid of Medicaid and Medicare. If we do, we'll lose enough money to operate our hospitals. Now, if we keep the Medicaid and Medicare, then we'll lose our nurses. And then we'll still have to shut down the hospital because if we don't have employees, we can't operate the hospital. So that's a lose-lose situation any way you look at it. Another local hospital executive said that the mandate echoed Jasper's sentiments. Well, it would be de devastating for the community. Frankly, we have a large percentage of our revenue that comes from Medicare and Medicaid and those kinds of products, Larry Gray and CEO of the Seminole Hospital District told the station. While Gray said he encourages vaccines, mandates don't work. I think the mandate is just a terrible message because if the if the vaccinations are working, why do you have to manipulate people to get them? Gary asked, what happens to individual choice and medical decisions between the patient and their doctor, which is all of the things that we're trying to support? Other than mandates for health care workers, Biden also announced he would direct the Federal Occupation Safety and Health Administration to enforce a rule against companies with 100 or more workers that employees either get inoculated or submit to weekly test. Federal workers and contractors will also have to get inoculated, he said. Now this was the 
short article here on the upstate New York Regional Hospital executive that said her facility will have to at least temporarily close down its maternity unit uh, and will not be able to deliver babies due to a mandate that was handed down by the former governor Andrew Como. Lewis County Hospital System Chief Executive Officer Gerald Kerr said that six employees who were employed in the unit resigned according to local media reports. So that left them with not enough people to run their uh, delivery maternity unit at that hospital. So where does that leave you and I as uh, preppers? Well, it puts us in a situation that if we have to go to the hospital, uh, we may be in fairly bad situations because if our rural hospitals close down, then you, that's where you find the majority of the preppers. Now, I, I know there's a lot of preppers out in the cities too, and I'm not, I'm not throwing anything at that. I'm just saying that there are tons and tons of rural hospitals that can't afford to lose Medicare and Medicaid. Uh, neither can they afford to lose their nurses. Now, a lot of the larger city hospitals, they have more people there that are willing to take the inoculation than the rural areas, and that's already been proven by this administration and the previous administration. They've all said that the rural areas are the areas that are uh, that are less likely to get inoculated. So we see more people quitting in those areas than we do others. And these two hospitals right here are just two examples of, I'm sure, the many across our nation that's going to be suffering in rural areas. So if we have hospitals on the verge of closing down, what are you and I going to do as preppers when we get uh, injured or we need uh, help from a medical facility like that. Well, we're going to be left out in the cold. Uh, we're going to have to fend for ourselves and learn how to take care of ourselves. We're going to have to learn how to doctor ourselves. We're going to have to learn how to uh, bandage ourselves, care for wounds, cuts, bruises, punctures, uh, whatever it may be. We're going to have to learn to take care of ourselves. And here's some things that uh, that we need to look into. This is I'm not going to go over piece by piece. I'm just uh, going to give you some general areas here, and then I'm going to leave the link to this in the description box below. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you haven't already. Like our video. It really counts with YouTube when you like our video. Share this video so others will know that these things are coming down the road, and they need to get ready for it. These are things that you and I need to consider very seriously right now. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Ring the bell icon when it comes up to be notified of future videos as we upload them. But let's get back to this right here now. One thing you're going to have to need are just general supplies. We went over this in a previous video. We talked about sterile, uh, sterile suturing packs. We talked about uh, uh, blades. We talked about uh, gauze. We talked about cotton pads. Uh, bandages, butterfly adhesive. We, we talked about just about everything on this list in another video. And if you want to watch it, go back uh, and search for medical supplies on our on our timeline here or on our uh, video here in the search bar and you'll find that. But here's some other things that we did mention is diagnostic equipment, things like pen lights, uh, things like uh, uh, digital body thermometers, uh, manual blood pressure monitors, uh, stethoscopes, uh, blood glucose monitors, things like that. Uh, this will be under your diagnostic equipment. Uh, again, I'm going to post this link so you can go back over and look at it. A uh, hemorrhage kit and wound care. You never know when you're going to be out working and get hurt. Uh, when you're living in a grid down situation and you're having to heat your home by wood or coal, uh, you're having to do everything by hand. You're going back to your hand saws and your hand drills and all these kind of things. Uh, uh, chopping axe. Uh, hatchets, all those things like that uh, will come back into play in a grid down situation. So if you get injured during one of those things, you need to know uh, how to take care of a wound like that. If somebody cuts a finger off or if somebody cuts a big gash in their leg with an axe, uh, you never know what could happen. Um, somebody could have a tree fall on them. It, it, you just never know. All kinds of situations can happen when you're out here uh, having to do these things to keep heat in your house and to make a living. So uh, hemorrhaging kits and wound closure. Uh, again, we'll put this link in here so you can get those things there. Uh, emergency fluid replacement, those may be a little harder to obtain. Uh, trauma and fracture care kits. Weight, ways to set broken bones, like if you've got a broken finger 
or a broken arm or a broken leg. You need to be able to know how to set those things and how to uh, bandage them up to keep them uh, in such a manner so they'll heal correctly and heal quickly. Uh, we need those things. Uh, burn kits. You never know when you're going to get burnt. You could have a flash out on the stove when you're putting uh, coal in it. I had that happen to me as a young boy. It flashed out and burnt my eyes and all my face and everything. Uh, ended up having to go to the to the hospital and have uh, bandages put on my face and, and eyes and head. Uh, it's a terrible thing for that to happen, but you need to have stuff there so you can have that done if it were to happen to you or one of your children. Uh, burn kits are in, invaluable. Uh, you never know when you're going to get burnt. You can get burnt with candles, kids can, candles, matches, uh, uh, stick their hand to a stove, all kinds of scenarios that could happen, and you need to have burn kits. Another thing is you need to have a dental kit. You need to look through your first aids and see if you've got enough stuff for your dental care. Um, now, one of the things that I do highly recommend here that I'll go ahead and say in this is those kits that you can buy at Walmart are a small, round uh, disc on a, on a card, and it's a filler that you put in, a, uh, in your tooth. If your filling comes out, you can put that stuff in there, and it is wonderful. I'm telling you, it is a wonderful thing. Now, I know there's a lot of medicines out there, natural medicines and uh, oils that you can purchase. And I'm sure some of you will put that in here. And please do. Uh, please comment on this. If you know of natural herbs, natural spices, natural medicines, things like that. You know, they said that cayenne pepper will work as a, as a packing for somebody that's had a, a wound, an open wound. That it can pack an open wound and it has uh, uh, minerals and stuff in it that will actually help heal up that wound. So those are kind of things that you need to have on hand in your pantry. Um, and remember to research these things, what, what you can use for these things, natural things that you can go out in your yard or your backyard or your woods and get certain things to help with wounds. And again, don't forget to like our video, subscribe to our videos, and share us with your uh, friends on your social media because people need to know what's coming down the road to them here. And eventually it's going to get to this. And... Folks are going to have to fend for themselves at some point, and we need to be ready when that thing happens, okay? Uh, another thing is for poisoning. Now, folks, it, it's easy enough to get poisoned. Uh, you could get poisoned eating uh, mushrooms out of the woods that you don't know what they are. There's all kinds of ways to get poisoned. Um, you know, we need to look into that. We need to have things on hand that, uh, that would help us with those things. Medicines and supplements. Um, Vitamins. We talked about that here a while back. It's not been long ago that uh, the FDA is now going to start regulating vitamins. It's going to start in this coming year in June or July. I don't remember which month it is. But they said that they were going to be regulating vitamins even more strenuous than they do prescription drugs. So that means that many vitamin manufacturers will be going out of business because they cannot afford the extra testing that they have to go through to provide the vitamins. Uh, so it's going to get really tough. Vitamins are going to get extremely high, and there'll be many of them that'll just go off the market. So keep that in mind. If you take vitamins, get extra. They last a long time uh, after their expir expiration dates. Many of them, and most of them, will last two years or longer after their expiration date. So be sure and put back extra vitamins and supplements and things like that. Uh, put back your creams and your antacid, uh, all those things that you, if you feel like you have to have them, you need to put those things back. Feminine hygiene for women, pregnancy kits for women. If you're out here and you can't get to the hospital and you get, uh, you come to a place that you're going to have to deliver a baby, you're going to have to do it at home. You need to know how to do that. Uh, there are books that show you how to do that. L research this stuff uh, so you'll know what you're doing. Delivery and newborn kit. These are things that uh, that's just invaluable if you have to do it. Many, many years and for many decades, people delivered their children at home. They had no hospitals to go to. More children were born at home than it was in hospitals. And it's a very, uh, very doable thing. It's just a matter of being calm and patient and knowing what you're doing. Uh, it can be done. Cleanliness and hygiene is very important in all this stuff. Now, the contents of a port portable first aid kit, we talked about some of that in another video. Just type in first aid kit in our search bar below this video, and you can find it with a list of things on there. But again, we're coming into a time and into an uh, era unprecedented to this generation and the generation 
you know, a couple of generations before. We're going to have to start making do more on our own. And this is just one of the areas that we've got to do. If you have holes in your first aid kits, if you have holes in your medical supplies, I highly encourage you to go out and fill them. So thank you guys. We appreciate you watching today. And again, don't forget to thumbs up to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe uh, to our channel. And don't forget that Jesus is king, folks. Uh, always prep. First prep your souls and then prep your pantries, your medical supplies, your first aid kits, your home supplies, all that kind of stuff. Check everything and fill up all the holes you've got because time is it's ticking. But until then, we'll see you in the next video.